Hi everybody, it's so nice to be here this afternoon. We're going to talk now about life after liposuction. You know, y'all pretty much heard everything I'm going to say. I have just only a couple of things that you haven't heard today. Everybody's been very, very good with their presentations. Um, I have the Lipedema Surgery Center. It used to be called Lipedema Liposuction Center. We've just recently made a change. I have no conflicts of interest. Liposuction at this time is the only method known to remove the fat, period. I've had a lot of questions lately about a, an injectable called Cabela. It is uh, an injection that has been approved here for the treatment of fat under the chin. It's a compound called deoxycholic acid. And it's, been, it's actually a component of mesotherapy that was a treatment that was very popular 10 to 15 years ago. I do not think it is a very good thing to use for lip, um, lipedema because it does not remove the fat, it just destroys the fat and it sits there. People that don't have any diseases tend to have long-term side effects like lumps and nodules that get hard and stay hard. There's a lot of pain, a lot of swelling and I just don't think it's a sensible thing to try. Diet and exercise removes the normal fat but lipedema fat remains even after bariatric surgery. I've had several patients who've had surgery, bariatric surgery, who lost a lot of weight but never realized that they had lipedema until they got down to a certain point and then everything stopped. And, and then the pain started. So, you know, it's a, it's a hard road to go. Limp-sparing liposuction such as power-assisted PAL and the water-assisted wall are very safe to use. They're very limp-sparing. Research shows that liposuction reduces the pain and stops progression. And that's what it's all about. It's more about quality of life than what it looks like. The cosmetic aspect, I know, is very important to everyone, but that's not the reason we do this even though we all try to make it look as good as we possibly can. The need for conservative therapies such as MLD and compression are greatly reduced and in some cases may be eliminated. The ladies that come in with stage one and two obviously are going to um, do the best because they're so early and quite often they do not need long-term compression. It's the more advanced stages that will most likely require long-term therapy. Now the goals of liposuction are to stop the pain, stop progression, improve ambulation, but most importantly to improve the quality of life. Durkheim's disease, there's been a lot of talk today about this and I probably don't need to go over this but let's do it really quick. It's also known as adiposis dolorosa. Sounds good, doesn't it? It's chronic and progressive. There is no cure. Liposuction does help in the short term. If a person comes in with Durkheim's, they're having a lot of pain and they understand that they may not have long-term success but they still want to have the surgery, it's very sensible to do it. Durkheim's treatment in, includes pain medications, typically oxycodone, hydrocodone, but other medicines should be tried first. For instance, ibuprofen, um, NSAIDs, ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin. Uh, even though they typically don't help a lot, it's still well worth the try. Weight reduction helps decrease the joint pain, as we all know. Surgical excision of the lipomas is also available. But we know that lipomas have been known to reoccur, and typically they will increase in number at that site. Liposuction can also be re, uh, used to remove the lipomas and the fat. Lasting weight, weight reduction by change in diet is difficult to achieve and does not affect the pain. And of course, comfort and mobility may become an issue, and quite often that requires the use of canes and scooters, etc. Pool therapy is also wonderful. I think it's great for lipedema as well. 
very low impact exercise, walking is fine. And physical therapy, MLD is very helpful. The only complication we have had with surgeries is anemia. And that tends to occur in people that have had gastric bypass or people that have had history of anemia. We find that the, the solution to that is to put a stitch in every incision that, that, that we make. These, these incisions are only about a quarter of an inch in length and one stitch is enough. <clears throat> we typically remove the sutures after three or four days because uh, the leakage will stop. Compression garments are applied after surgery and if they leak a lot after surgery, we will put cotton orthopedic padding over it and then followed by short stretch and then they are wrapped in puppy pads, disposable large pads. One large pad usually covers the lower leg and then another one for the upper leg. The first few days, uh, there'll be a lot of drainage usually. It'll last for several days. What you might have one or two that stay around for a week or so, but the fluid turns to um, like a straw-colored a straw look. Um, we, uh, we have seen these uh, happen, especially around the, the uh, upper arm that may stay there for 10 to 14 days. It's, it's uh, very usual to be tired after surgery. You just need to give yourself a chance to heal. We typically tell people after surgery to go back to their room take a rest, get up and walk a little bit, take a rest and get up and walk some more. And they do very well. Emotions can run high after surgery. PMS-like symptoms. It's primarily from the re release of the hormones stored in the fat. Low-grade temperature, uh, temperatures are also very common. We consider a temperature normal if it's less than 100.8. And that uh, lasts for a couple of days. It's just a part of the healing process. The first few days also, there'll be antibiotics. We typically use Keflex, but um, we'll use something different if they have allergy to it. Bromelain has been discussed earlier. We think it helps a lot. It's made from pineapple juice and pineapple stems. It decreases swelling and improves antibiotic absorption. Arnica is also used as well as iron supplements if there's a history of of anemia or if they're going to get two surges within a week and we use hydrocodone or if they're allergic we also use tramadol. Laxatives are uh, advised because of the hydrocodone tends to make everybody constipated. The first several weeks after surgery it's very important to uh, eat healthy, drink a lot of extra liquids, uh, exercise as you can uh, that will be able to increase that over time. Walking is the best thing you can do, and physical therapy. Healing does occur over the first 12 to 18 months, although you'll see most improvement in about six months, and actually quite a bit of improvement over the first month. Your breast size typically increases. Uh, stage one increases about a half cup on average, and the uh, more advanced stages, of course, will be even more. Untreated lipedema areas may also grow after surgery. For instance, if you came in and you knew you had lipedema in your legs and your arms and you choose just to treat the legs for the time being and plan to come back later for your arms, you will find that it, your arms will grow somewhat. You'll also notice that you have a better response to dietary changes. It's not uncommon for somebody to lose 20, even 30 pounds after surgery. The diet, we've talked about this extensively. Uh, I do highly recommend gluten-free and organic as much as possible. Long-term care, now I know everybody's heard this, you don't shop the grocery aisles. You stay away from packaged foods. You check for chemicals. You avoid whites. Don't eat anything that has like flour, rice, potatoes, breads. They're just not good. And the supplements, we've gone over this too. Uh, I'm not gonna spend time on that. Dextroamphetamine or diet 
drugs do help you long term. You can take these medications lifelong. It improves the lymphatic function and improves blood vessel integrity. As far as exercise goes, swimming pools are very good. Uh, swimming, deep water exercise, walking in the swimming pool are excellent sources of exercise. And gym membership is helpful. Uh, of course, you'll have weights there, yoga classes, for instance, and of course, your treadmill and walking tracks all year. One of my favorite forms of exercise is total body vibration. It improves the lymphatic flow, it enhances metabolism, it increases bone mineral density, it decreases stress hormone cortisol, and increases growth hormone. The best thing about it is 10 minutes equals an hour with weights in the gym. This exercise is used for people that are not ambulatory, but it works very well for lipedema ladies because it, it improves the blood circulation, it removes toxins such as mercury and lead, it increases the body's metabolism, it promotes regeneration and faster healing, it improves the skin tone and decreases the appearance of cellulite. And the best thing about it is you can use lower temperatures. Temperatures in the range of 125 to 130 degrees work very well. As far as the long-term use of the garments, we have everybody stay in the uh, post-op surgical garments for about a month and a half. Uh, after that, BioFlect is very, very good. BioFlect has minerals woven into the fabric that reflects this infrared energy back into the body. It's just like sitting in the sauna. It increases sluggish circulation. It massages the lymphatics. They come up to size 4X. They go over the feet so they adequately cover the ankle and they're graded. Sequential pneumatic compression pumps such as FlexiTouch are very good for prevention and treatment of the fibrosis as well as compression, MLD, walking and exercise. The before and after photographs. I'm not a fan. I think that they um, promote unrealistic expectations. Remember the reasons we do liposuction, stop the pain, stop progression and make you walk better. I know deep down you want it to look better and I guarantee you everybody tries to make it look better but that's not the reason we do it. With your expectations, it's really important to have have um, realistic expectations. You know, like we said, the reasons we do this now, stop the pain, progression, and make you walk better. But the most important part of it is to improve your quality of life. So here I go, showing you one, even though I don't like them. <laughs> this lady came in, the photographs above are the ones pre-op. She had liposuction pretty much everywhere, followed by a tummy tuck, and then later after this, arm lift. She was happy, but of course she wanted it to look better. The, uh, the outcome we have here is about as good as you're going to get with uh, what we have to offer. It, it, it improved her life so much, and, and I'll show you that in just a minute. This is a stage two or one two patient. You'll see improvement in the calf area and the thighs. This lady sent me these. This is the photograph on the left shows before surgery and on the right was about six months after surgery. Uh, she's done extremely well. She's walking up a storm now. This lady worked out she worked out three hours a day, six days a week. And the photograph above shows what she looked like. She ate very well. She did everything she was supposed to do, and she could not get her arms to look the way she wanted them. After surgery, you can see all her muscles. They were always there. She just didn't show them. 
This is the lady I showed you at the start. She started out weighing 460 pounds. The photograph on the right is after she, she had gastric bypass first. She lost down to 169 pounds, followed by all the liposuction that, that I showed you, and an arm lift. And her life has totally changed. She's gone back to college. She's a nurse now, and she's doing extremely well. She has worked very hard. This lady played the saxophone when she was young. She couldn't play it preoperatively because her arms were so heavy. She just couldn't hold them up. After surgery, she was back with the saxophone. And this lady, of course, I think this lady is here today. She uh, is extremely happy. She's showing her, her legs off today or yesterday. She's doing extremely well. This lady has done extremely well. It has changed her life. You see on the left, she was really proud. Now she's even prouder. Um, it, it has changed her life. She runs now. She runs with her kids. Her husband has lost 60 pounds. He's doing great too. So there, I mean, this, is, this has really changed their life. This is about the quality of life and this has really, really, really improved their lives. Thank you.